reignite my leadership within District 55 and for me to work with all of you to identify our future leaders. It was also the timing that was right for me. So when Melody contacted me and said, would I support District 55 this year? I said, absolutely, but in what capacity and when would I start that leadership role for you? And she said, well, what about being the district leadership chair? And I thought, wow, that doesn't really get underway until the December time period. And then it's the beginning of the next year in 2021. And that was perfect timing for me because I did finish my international leadership role in August of this year. And so starting again in district leadership in the November, December timeframe was perfect. Now I am still continuing in a role with international and that is I'm also one of the co-chairs of the international leadership committee. So the other interesting factor is I am learning how we conduct international leadership recruitment and interviews and thought I could leverage that at the district level for the district leadership committee. So I thought that that would be a great synergy between those two leadership roles for me this year. I really want this to be a conversation and interactive an interactive session with you tonight. And so I am going to ask you some questions. Yes, we'll enter some things into the chat, but because we have a small enough group, I'll probably want to interact personally with you as well and actually have you state some things verbally. So again, this can be more of a conversation. Now, we're talking about golden leadership and leadership lessons that we've all learned and our different leadership journeys. So in Toastmasters, we may join for one reason and then we may continue for another reason. And I always say we need to know the why members join. And Harlan's, Harlan's session before this at 7 p.m. was golden. And he talked about how we motivate our members and how we need to find out what our members want. Absolutely, the very first question we need to ask our members is, why are they interested in Toastmasters? What do they want to gain from Toastmasters? And then begin that journey with them and mentor them, right? All right, so I am going to pull up my presentation, but as I said, as we go through this, we are going to actually have a conversation and we are going to focus more on leadership tonight than we are on communication. But when I think about the leadership opportunities and Toastmasters, they are bountiful. And what is fascinating to me is that we have specific leadership roles and Toastmasters that are from the club level all the way through to the international level. And I'm sure you've seen this chart. This chart is in our manuals. It is in our leadership handbooks. It's out on the website. The bottom line is look at the leadership opportunities that Toastmasters identifies. But what is even more fascinating is if you go out to the District 55 website, if you go out to any district website, you will find that districts have created their own leadership opportunities specific to what the districts need. And I will tell you that in District 50, if you go out and look at District 50's website, you will find that they have over 50 district volunteer leadership positions outside of what Toastmasters promotes. And they are one of many districts around the world that have that many. And the reason I can state that is because a committee I was a part of at the international level last year, we looked at the district websites, every single district website, and wrote down all of the leadership opportunities that districts offered. And District 50 was one of the ones that had photographs of every one of their leaders, and it took up page after page on their website. 
District 55 also has numerous leadership roles available, and Harlan is serving in one of those, as well as many of you. Jean is serving in one of those. So many of you are serving in perhaps the listed leadership roles here, as well as other leadership roles. So there is absolute gold to be mined in leadership opportunities in Toastmasters. And in 2010, we rebranded ourselves and took the tagline where leaders are made. And one of the reasons that we did that, when you look at our over 300,000 members around the world, about a third of them if not more than a third, are involved in some leadership capacity in our organization from the club to the international level. So truly, we are an organization where leaders are made. However, is that the reason that you join Toastmasters? I can tell you it is not the reason that I joined Toastmasters. I joined Toastmasters to improve my communication skills. And one of the reasons was I was an entrepreneur. I needed capital for my fledgling company. And by the way, all the investors back then were men. And I wanted to be able to communicate articulately as a female-owned business about the opportunity with my business. So I joined for the communication skills. And then I found out about the leadership opportunities. So I want to know from you why you joined. So what I'd like for you to do right now is let's type this one into the, the chat because I want everyone to see why you joined. So for all of you, type into the chat why you joined Toastmasters. And you know what we practiced, Jean, originally is now not working. Isn't that fascinating? That's so funny, isn't it? It is. Um, so, so this is so funny. Violetta was the first one to chat in. To she says that she was dragged into it by her boss. Um, right. Harlan says he he had some some ticks and some quirks, and he wanted to remove them from. He wanted to smooth out those presentations. Um, my why was literally just to be a better communicator, but it's not, it's my why has changed. So that's interesting. Claude mentions on the spot speaking terrified him. And I think that's probably one of the things that really brings people in. Yeah, I think so too. All right. So that's great. So for most of you so far, it was for the communication improvement opportunities within Toastmasters. All right. So now I want you to type into the chat the leadership levels that you have participated in in Toastmasters. So have you been a club officer? Have you been an area director, a division director, a district leader outside of that? So now what I want you to do is I want you to type in the leadership levels that you've participated in, club, area, division, district, region, international. We have a couple of folks so far that are club officers as expected, right? Veronica was an area, area director. Um, Hetty was club officer, area director six times and division director twice. Mm -hmm. She's an all-star here. Uh, let's see. Um, Violetta also has uh, navigated the leadership uh, path within Toastmasters Club Area Division District and Region. Uh, Scott Gilley has been Club and Area Director. Stephen Hall has been Area Director and a District Volunteer in the past. Great. So All right. A nice range. Terrific. Yeah, we have a great range. So we have really all the way through the leadership levels in Toastmasters. That's perfect. All right. Now, how did you become a leader? So how did you become a leader? How did you become a club leader, area leader, division leader? So type into the chat how you became a leader at those levels. I'm waiting for, for people to bring them in, but I was challenged at my home club, which is a corporate club by somebody 
uh, in management who I respected a great deal and told me he thought it would be very good for me. Okay. All right. So you actually had someone in management at your company. That's great. All right. So are they, is anybody else responding? Harlan said he was volunteered and then became proactive afterwards. He kind of got bit by the, the experience. Uh, Doyle said, Doyle from Fredericksburg Toastmasters said he was told by, he was asked by Linda and couldn't say anything but yes. <laughs> she has that effect on everyone, Doyle. <laughs> yes. And so a lot of people are um, saying that they were encouraged by somebody else to step up. Um, Melissa mentioned she was interested in learning new things. That's great. Yeah. All right. So this is very interesting. Most of you were asked, right? Most of you were asked. So now what I want you to think about is whom should you ask to be a leader? So now I'm not going to talk about you. So now what I want you to do is to type into the chat. And I literally would like you to write in names if you're willing, right? But if you're not willing to write the person's name, then say, I need to recommend someone for club VP education. I need to recommend someone for club secretary. I need to recommend someone to be an area director. I need to recommend someone to be a division director. But if you're even willing to share the names, do that. And the reason I want you to do that is I was asked, right? And that's how I started my leadership journey. And I think if that person had not asked me, where would I be today, right? So we need to ask and we need to express our confidence in individuals to become leaders. So we need to tell them that we have confidence in them and that we believe they should serve in leadership. And if there are specific roles that we believe that they would be good at serving, then we need to tell them those roles. So I know Harlan has already, he talked about in his session earlier tonight that he expressed that to a member. And we need to do that. And by the way, we need to do that throughout our Toastmaster journey. We need to identify potential leaders, tell them that we believe in their abilities and specify what those roles should be if we think, or if we just think, hey, they need to be a club leader, then, and we think that they are capable of doing multiple roles, then talk with them about the different roles, but encourage them to become leaders. All right, so Jean, what roles are they talking about? So uh, Veronica mentioned, she, she's like, I need to recommend someone to be an area director. Um, Interestingly, Hetty uh, challenges Doyle Bevig to be an area director. Wonderful. Uh, Harlan mentions, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. But Doyle says that he thinks Janice would be a great area director. <laughs> uh, Harlan says he has a list of names that he always has with him um, for his club, West Austin Two Candidates. And January 1st, he's going to take that list out of his pocket and start talking with people. Oh, uh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Well, as we've talked about, bottom line is, as the district leadership chair, it is the responsibility of myself and my team, certainly to recruit and interview candidates for district leadership roles in the 2021-2022 year. And so I want you to help me identify those leaders. And if those leaders are you personally, then I want you to fill out the application, the biographical data form, send in the photograph. And I want you to do that by January 31st. But if there are individuals you want to recommend, then I want you to contact them. I want you to tell them the leadership roles you believe that they would be great at serving in and then encourage them if it's a district leadership role to do that. Now, guess what? We're in December, right? So for clubs that elect their club officers semi-annually, now is the time they should be electing those leaders. They should have done it in November, right? 
Bottom line is they better do it this month in order for them to serve their six months in leadership at the club level. If your club elects annual officers, then that's great. They're going to continue for the next six months. But who are going to be the next club leaders? So again, in Harlan's session earlier, we were to, he was talking about the fact that many clubs retread their club leaders and we should be identifying members to fill those leadership roles as new leaders every year, right? I will tell you, when I was area director, I had a club and that club will remain unnamed, although they are still a club today. And their president didn't have time to form a nominating committee to identify leaders. Well, look, as an area director, was it my responsibility to identify new leaders for that club? No, it wasn't, but I knew that he wasn't going to do it. So I stepped up and I simply visited the club and started talking to members and saying, have you thought about club leadership? And I literally sent him the slate of officers for his club for the next year, right? So we can be influencers at every level of our organization, but I am asking you, first of all, are you willing to step up to the next level of leadership? And if so, golden. But I also want you to identify leaders within your own clubs, leaders within your area, your division, your district to step up to other leadership roles in our organization. All right, so I want now for you to write into the chat, yes, I will, if you agree to do that, to identify future leaders. And again, if you are ready for your next step, for you to step up as well. So Jean, I want everyone to say yes to this. We're getting a lot of yes, I wills, Lark. All right, good. Yes, you were you were firing us up. And I, I couldn't agree more about that kind of, you know, thinking at it in your club and all along the way and, and reaching out to people who seem to be both um, interested and like have a specific skill set that could be applied and leveraged, right? And it, and it would be so easy when you see that in them to say, hey, I think that you would be great at. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And if you can identify that person, then do. And I can tell you stories from my 1990 joining Toastmasters until today about identifying leaders. And again, it truly is our responsibility. It is a responsibility of every member of this organization to identify future leaders. And we just need to ask them. And by the way, that's how we need to recruit members as well, right? Just ask. All right, so let's move on and look at some other slides and other opportunities here. So the club, this is the foundation of our organization. And there are seven leadership roles at the club level. So as Jean just said, think about the skills needed to be successful in the different club leadership roles. And I like to start with the sergeant at arms or when I was in New Zealand, a member in New Zealand said that the sergeant at arms is the vice president of first impressions. And I loved that. So the sergeant at arms, the vice president of first impressions, I'm a sergeant at arms at the Arthur Store Toastmasters Club. And at every one of our meetings, our meetings start at 10, 15 a.m. Well, I am online at 10 a.m. And I am greeting members and guests. And I have a topic that I will discuss. I will ask about that topic. I will ask our guests how they heard about us, why they came as a guest. And then at the end of the meeting, we try to wrap the bow around the package and make sure that our guests know that they are welcome to join and we want to fulfill whatever their needs are in this organization. So Sergeant at Arms, right? So think about the best greeter, the extrovert in your organization in your club that could serve as a sergeant at arms, a new member that could serve in that role, right? 
And then we look at the treasurer, right? You got someone who is has financial background, CPA, bookkeeping, right? Someone who's meticulous. Then you think about the secretary, right? Someone who listens, is organized, can take notes, track members, guests at every meeting. And then we think about the vice president public relations. Again, who is active on social media? Because that's required in today's world for our vice president public relations. And then the vice president membership, the person who will absolutely connect with those guests, find out their needs, and then convert them to members in our organization. The vice president education, again, organizational skills, acute organizational skills, and someone who navigates easy speak well, right? who is going to make sure that every role is filled for every single meeting, make sure that every member is rotating through the different roles, that members are speaking, that they are in pathways, and that they are fulfilling why they join Toastmasters. <clears throat> and then our president of the club, right? The leader, the captain of the ship, the captain of that club, making sure that we're fulfilling the needs of our members, that we are a quality club, that we are marching toward the distinguished club status, because that ensures that every member is achieving their goals in, in the club. All right, so at the club level, I want to know the club leadership roles that you've held. So type into the chat the club leadership roles that you have already held. And by the way, I've held all of them. I will tell you today, I would not want to be the vice president of public relations because I'm not deep into social media. So I know that my skill set would need to be improved. Now, that'd be a good way to improve my skill set in social media, right? I would certainly need a mentor to support me in that. But the bottom line is um, I served back when we didn't do a lot with social media. All right. So what club leadership roles have they held, Jean? Joseph was VP Ed, Melissa's been Secretary, VP Ed, Sergeant at Arms, and President. Doyle has been VP of Membership and President. Violetta is Treasurer, VPPR, VPM, VPE, and President. Like you, working her way through all of them. <laughs> Cloud has been President, and Kartikaya has, was VPE. Um, Hedy said, all offices, all offices. Okay. Now, my next question for you is, is there a role at the club level where you haven't served that you want to serve? And if not, then again, I want you to think about the members of your club. I want you to think about which leadership roles they should serve in. All right. So that's what I want you to think about. Is there a leadership role that you would like to serve in to challenge you? But think about the members of your club and those that you can encourage to serve in club leadership roles. All right, now let's move on to the next level of leadership in Toastmasters, and that is the area director role. I will tell you, this is my favorite leadership role in Toastmasters. And in a few years, after I fulfilled all my international leadership responsibilities, I want to be an area director again. Now, why do I say that? Because the area director is the direct link to our clubs. The area director can positively impact every single club in their area. So the area director role to me is the best leadership role in this organization. You can see the impact of your leadership in that role. All right, so now I want to know how many of you have served as an area director? So if you have served as an area director, type that into the chat. All right, so if you have served as an area director, type it into the chat. Arlen has. Sally Brown says she very much enjoyed it. Violetta says she has. I also have served as an area governor. Uh, I know Hetty mentioned, yes. 
All right. So now all of you who served as an area director or an area governor, what is the main role of an area director or area governor? I already kind of insinuated, but what do you consider to be the main responsibility of an area director? The main responsibility, and I want you to type it very concisely into the chat. So what is the main responsibility of an area director? Harlan, Harlan says support the clubs and their members. Uh, Violetta says support the club leaders. Uh, Sally Brown says to communicate with all clubs. And I think like bringing that sort of face of the district to all clubs. Uh, Hetty says, and, you know, help, help people earn education awards and continue on their path. All right. Beautiful job. So does anybody know the district mission? I do, but we'll find out if anybody else does. <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. Harlan does right. too, and I'll bet Violetta knows. Oh, I bet they do too. All right. So do you want to state it, Jean? I'll let you state it. What is yeah. the district mission? The district, the district mission is to build new clubs and to uh, support all clubs in achieving excellence. Yes, beautiful. So the area director role is the second half of that district mission. We build new clubs and support all clubs in achieving excellence. So area directors are to support all clubs in achieving excellence. And how do they do that? Well, number one is you have to develop the trust with your clubs. So that is number one. You don't go like a bull in a china cabinet and visit clubs and tell them everything they're doing wrong. That is not the way to build trust. So we are observers as area directors and we attend club meetings, we observe, we learn their culture, we look at what they are doing in a golden manner. We write down maybe some areas for improvement, but we focus on what they are doing well and how we can support them in doing even better. We develop trust with the leaders of the clubs and the members of the clubs. We conduct area council meetings as the best way to share best practices among clubs and the best way for the clubs within the area to support one another. So we hold frequent area council meetings. We visit clubs as often as we possibly can. And the way that you know you've succeeded as an area director is when you attend a club meeting in your area and they do not introduce you. Did you hear me? You attend a club meeting of a club in your area and they do not introduce you because when that happens, you know you are a part of their club. You are a member of their family and they don't need to introduce you because you're family. So the area director role, the best role, the best leadership role in our organization it is all about support. It is about supporting the clubs and achieving excellence. And if you look in the handbook, you'll see this definition of the responsibilities. And that first one, the direct liaison between the club and the district. Develop the trust of each club in your area Support them through area council meetings and through attending their club meetings and attending their club officer meetings. And once you've done that, they can achieve excellence even more than they've already achieved because you'll support them in that. All right. Now, area directors or area governors, I want you to type into the chat at least one skill that you gained in serving as an area director. So type into the chat at least one skill that you gained in serving as an area director. And if you want to write several, that's great, but write at least one. Harlan says, uh, managing different people. And I have to say, I agree with him on that, like understanding different perspectives and maybe overcoming 
opposing perspectives occasionally. That's really great practice. Uh, Sally says leadership, communication, and commitment. Oh, yeah. And for me, I, it, I, I was surprised at the, the coaching ability. Like, you know, if that's something yeah. that you want, if, if you want to develop that skill set, uh, Area Director is a great place to start that practice. Yeah, ab- I love that, Jean. I love that. Yeah, mentoring and coaching, absolutely. And again, as a coach, you have to assess the skills of those you're coaching, right? And then you work with them to hone those skills and to make those skills more effective. So absolutely, I love that. Well, let me show you some of the skills and competencies that Toastmasters promotes as skills that you will gain in this position. And as I said, very first thing is developing trust. And in any leadership position, that's the first thing that you need to do, right? So you may be competent in club officer roles, right? You've served in those roles. And so being competent in a club leadership role is certainly one part of serving as an area director, but the clubs may not have worked directly with you. They may not know your competency as a club leader. So you have to develop the trust with the clubs and then you can share your competencies in leading clubs, right? And in supporting them and how to be more effective leaders in their clubs. Analytical skills, again, observing, analyzing what they're doing well and what can help them go to the next level. Critical thinking, so, all right, we've got different personalities within these clubs. And so how am I going to approach Jean? Her personality, her communication style is different than mine. How am I going to approach Harlan? How am I going to approach Sally? How am I going to approach Hetty Violetta Doyle? How am I going to approach these different leaders? Their communication styles may be different than mine. So I need to think critically about how, what is the best approach for e- with each of these leaders. Organization, coaching, mentoring, as Jean said. Collaborative leadership. So we need to collaborate with the different club leaders. And as I said, within the area council meetings, help them to collaborate with one another to to support one another in building one another up and becoming even better than they are now. Punctuality, absolutely in all leadership roles and the foundation of every leadership role, the foundation of our organization, our core values of integrity, respect, service, and excellence. All right, so what do you think about the area director role? If you've not served in this role, what do you think about serving in this role? Being a direct liaison with clubs in an area. It is an awesome golden role if you are the type that likes to interact with different leaders, loves to attend club meetings, loves to observe, analyze, and support clubs and leaders, then that is a great role for you. All right. So the next leadership role is the division. So clubs are grouped into areas. So four to six clubs are grouped into an area. Areas are grouped into divisions. And in District 55, we currently have seven divisions. And those divisions are led by a division director. So if you have served as a division director or a division governor, I want you to type that into the chat. So type that you have served as a division director or division governor into the chat. So far, it's Violetta, um, me. Hetty, I know, I know Hetty has, she hasn't typed it yet, but I will identify her. All right. Ooh, Melody Moore has joined us. Yay! Madam has served as a division director as well. Welcome. All right. So it sounds like we've got some opportunities for division leadership among this group. Sounds like we've got opportunities for area leadership and perhaps division leadership among this group. So again, these are leadership opportunities for you to consider. Every member of Toastmasters will have a different journey. It will be unique to that member, but I want you to think about the division director. All right, so division directors, 
I want you to type into the chat, what is the main responsibility of a division director? And for those of you who haven't served in this role, but have served with a division director, so if you've been an area director, you've certainly served with a division director, you're welcome to type in the chat what you believe the main responsibility of a division director is. So type into the chat the main responsibility of a division director. So All right, Harlan what are they said, telling us, Jean? Harlan says that they they really primarily boss the area directors around. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yes. So that's a positive I'm, term. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of build on what Harlan said a little bit and, and see that when I volunteered to be a division director, I part of my motivation was personal growth because I hadn't professionally had the opportunity to build a team and lead a team like for the duration of a year. And, and so for me, that was an incredible opportunity to think about, you know, building a team, um, working towards a unified goal and um, doing the coaching and the mentoring and bringing people up, but also translating, um, you know, the, the, the values that come down. We, you, if you think about it that way, it for me, I leveraged that experience professionally in so many ways. That's wonderful. Thanks so much, Jean. Absolutely. So at the division level, you become a manager, right? You become a people manager. So at the area level, you are more collaborative, right? So you are not directly responsible for the club leaders, you are coaching and mentoring them. So it is certainly a collaborative leadership style. But at the division level, you actually do have responsibilities that are managerial responsibilities. So the area directors report directly to you, right? So you are leading and supporting those area directors. At the division level, we want to make sure that the area directors understand their responsibilities, that they are fulfilling those responsibilities, that you are supporting them and fulfilling those responsibilities, okay? So you need to be in constant contact with your area directors. There are division level activities that you're responsible for coordinating. So you need to be setting those division goals and working with your area directors on their area goals. All right, so those of you who have served as division directors, what skills did you learn? So what skills or competencies did you gain as a division director? And Jean's already implied several skills and competencies that she gained. So would anyone else like to go ahead and put into the chat the skills or competencies that you gained as a division director. And again, Harlan, you can absolutely put into the chat the bossy skills that your division director gained during his or her term. <laughs> All right, so Jean, is anyone typing competencies into the chat? So it's interesting the way Violetta phrased it was you learn to lead without like, being there without really, you know, being at the forefront, right? Allowing other right. people, allowing other people to lead. Um, so okay. Hetty says you can lead some to success, but some others did not want to gain success, right? And and so there's opportunities for leadership there as well. Um, I think, you know, again, this is a super professionally transferable skill. How do you motivate people? Yeah, Th this is fascinating. I will share. So those of you who know David Brooks, world champion, he was a world champion in 1990. So quite a few years ago, but David lives in Austin, Texas. And David Brooks and Lark Doley served as division governors at the same time. I was the division governor for Division J, and he was the division governor for Division K. And I will tell you that David talked to me about the fact that he asked each of his area governors at the time what their goals were. And he was surprised that some of them had minimum goals and others had maximum goals. But what that taught him is that, again, every leader has the right to decide what their goals are, right? 
He wanted everyone to certainly achieve the minimum goals, but the bottom line is he was fairly surprised that there was a diverse group of of area governors at that time and that they had certainly different levels of what they wanted to accomplish in those roles. So it is fascinating, absolutely. And again, it's our individual journeys, but it is important that we know what their goals are, right? And we definitely need to be sure that we set the expectations and that there are minimum expectations. And we certainly hope that they will want to achieve more than that. So look at this, supervision, right? Empowerment. So Jean made the comment that essentially Violetta said, yeah, we're leading from the back, right? So the bottom line is we do want to empower our area directors to do their jobs. Again, a lot of the different skills that we learn as area directors, we're going to continue. So that analytical, that analytical thinking, critical thinking, organization, coaching, you'll see that a lot of these skills are the same from level to level, but hopefully we improve them at each level of leadership. All right. So let's look at the next level. So Area and divisions are district leadership roles, but at the district level, we have additional leadership roles, and I like to call it the district cabinet, and so you see the leadership roles here. So we have the district director, the captain of the ship, and then we have the program quality director, club growth director, public relations manager, administration manager, finance manager, and logistics manager. So I believe that these make up the district cabinet. And let's look specifically at each one of these roles. So these are interestingly enough in alignment with some of the club leadership roles. So the logistics manager, is in alignment with the sergeant at arms at the club level. Now, the logistics manager at the district level used to have responsibility for all kinds of assets. So we had, we had speaker systems, mic systems, right? Video recorders. We have had all this equipment. Well, guess what? Now in the virtual environment, we don't need all of that equipment. We're doing things virtually now. But the bottom line is the logistics manager still has a role within the district. And the district may actually have multiple logistics managers, or should we say a logistics manager with a team. So a logistics manager with a team. And when I think about Jean and her Zoom master role, and I think about Jason and all these other individuals who are really our technology support staff, right? And I think about them and they're supporting all the virtual logistics that we have today. We need a team to do that and to manage that. But the logistics manager role. So let me ask, has anybody served at the district level as the logistics manager that's on the call today? Has anyone served in that role? I don't, I don't, think, I don't think we do have anybody. Okay. All right. So this is fascinating, but we do have individuals. We've got Melody, we've got Eugene, we've got others. So Jean, since you are really serving as Zoom, as a Zoom master, talk, talk about the logistics role at the district level now, if you would. Absolutely. So when we were having in-person meetings, it was very different from how we're doing it now. Um, but it, it is mostly, the, as, as you said, Lark, very much setting the tone, setting the place um, a, in a sergeant of arms type of role. So, so making sure that your venue is set up, whether it's in person or it's an online meeting, and, and maybe you need a few breakout rooms set up, you know, so then a logistics manager might understand how to how to navigate all of that in Zoom. Um, but making sure that you have what you need to execute the business at hand. Yeah. That's another thing too. If you're having a business meeting, there you go. You wanna, if you're having a business meeting, make sure you can execute that. If you are having a contest, you know, a district contest, make sure you can execute that. Yeah. Beautifully said, absolutely. So whether it is physical logistics or virtual logistics, there's a lot of organization that goes around that. And so when we think about the skills for this role, truly asset management when we are face-to-face -face is 
critical to the organization, but it's that organization, right? It's the organization. And today it's the technology and being sure that we can manage the technology. All right, so let's look at the finance manager role. I will tell you, I truly believe at the district level that it is important that the finance manager have some accounting background because finance at the district level is thousands of dollars. So I certainly encourage district directors to select individuals that have some type of accounting background. And literally the finance manager has fiscal oversight of the district budget, district expense reimbursements, district expenses, now they work hand in hand with the district director, but they need to make sure that every district is fiscally responsible. So when you think about the finance manager and compare it to club level, we're talking the treasurer at the club level, right? And when we think about the skills and competencies that we gain, it's all about that fiscal responsibility, the budgeting, the accounting, being very disciplined and organized in this role. So again, whenever we think about leadership roles in Toastmasters, we want to identify the skills and competencies that we gain that are going to be transferable to our professional life. The next district leadership role is the administration manager. And I remember when I recommended an administration manager to Anna Lopez when she was district governor at the time. She asked me if I knew anyone who could fill that role. And I said, I absolutely know someone who could fill that role. And it was Margaret Cathy who ultimately became a district governor herself. But I knew that she did that for the place where she worked, that she was responsible for the secretarial role, the administration manager role where she worked. And I knew she would be perfect for it. And she was. So what does the administration manager do? Well, the administration manager is responsible for all the historical records of the district, responsible for the minutes of district executive committee meetings and district council meetings, maintaining those accurate and timely records of district business. So that's the role of the administration manager. And again, when you think about this role and you compare it to the club role, it's like the secretary at the club level, right? And what are the skills and competencies that we gain in this role? And you see them, writing, editing, detail orient orientation, organization, accuracy. See the different skills and competencies that we gain at this level of district leadership. And if we progress on, public relations manager. Well, what does that sound like at the club level? Vice president, public relations? Uh-huh, pretty similar, right? Just at a district level. Responsibilities include a comprehensive communication plan. So the public relations manager is responsible for increasing the visibility of Toastmasters within the geography of the district. And they need a communication plan, a public relations plan that will do that. A lot of public relations managers focus on internal communication within the district, but we need to have them doing it externally as well. So we want to increase the understanding of Toastmasters, what it is and what it does within the district. And again, what skills and competencies do they gain? Well, they should be developing a marketing strategy along with the club growth director. They should be developing the communication plan. They should creatively be thinking about how they can do that. And especially in our pandemic world today, all of these sales and promotions, these are all skills and competencies that we can gain in the role of public relations manager for the district. All right, so let's look at the club growth director role. Now, what is the associated role at the club level? Vice president membership, right? 
but we want the club growth director to be growing membership and clubs. And again, they should be working hand in hand with the public relations manager, just as the vice president membership at the club level should be working hand in hand with the vice president public relations. And again, what skills do they need? Well, they need the marketing strategy skills as well. They need to develop a marketing plan, again, to market, to increase membership, and to market, to increase new clubs. We want to share the gold of Toastmasters with more and more people around the globe. Every person around the globe can benefit from the skills that they can develop in Toastmasters, communication and leadership skills, and at the leadership levels, all these other competencies that they can gain. So Lark, I want yeah. to comment on club growth is, I, I served in that role a couple years ago and I was very uncomfortable with the concept of selling Toastmasters. Ah. closing the deal. That was a very uncomfortable thing for me. Um, but I managed to flip my perspective and, and as you said, share the value of Toastmasters right. like, because I really wanted that for more people. Um, and it allowed me to talk about Toastmasters in a way that I was very comfortable with um, promoting the value, sharing yeah. the value, encouraging other people to take advantage of it. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. And that's absolutely the approach that we need to take in order to increase membership at our clubs, right? So it is people come as a guest to Toastmasters because they're asked, because they have found a need, because their management at work said that this could improve their skills. Or again, they've heard about Toastmasters and they come. But again, we need to ask guests to come to our club meetings, right? And again, we shouldn't be afraid of that because truly, if we value what we've gained from the organization, then why wouldn't we want to share it? And absolutely, I think it's it's the word sharing, right? Sharing the benefits of this organization with others. And that's exactly why we want to form new clubs. And we want to form new community clubs and new corporate clubs. Again, I will tell you, if you show corporate management the pathways list of paths and the competencies, it sells itself. So I truly believe that all we need to do is share that and that corporations will absolutely decide that it can benefit their organization. <laughs> I will tell you, when I went to one corporation and I was talking to them about the fees and they said, well, how much will this cost? And I said, well, there's a charter fee of 125. And they said 125,000. Okay, well, that sounds reasonable. <laughs> of course, um, I, I said, no, it's not 125,000. It's just $125. And it was amazing. They thought that $125,000 would be a fine price to pay for the benefits of Toastmasters. So again, we should never short sell ourselves, right? The benefits that we offer to people around the globe are priceless benefits, and we need to be proud of sharing it. So thank you so much, Jean, for, for stating that and that you were afraid of it, but you found out that, hey, it's just about sharing the benefits. So the program quality director, this role is all about quality at the club level. And the way that we achieve quality at the club level is by training our club leaders, training our area directors, training our division directors. Training is the foundation of quality, in my opinion. And of course, I'm a little biased as a training manager for my company, Maximus. But we want to be sure that every club is a quality club. And so we need to be sure that all the club leaders know what a quality club is, know what their leadership roles are, know that they are responsible for the quality of their club meetings, for assessing their members' needs and fulfilling those needs, and for publicizing their clubs so that they can continue year in and year out to serve the needs of more and more members to gain the benefits of Toastmasters. And again, what are some of the skills and competencies that we gain as the program quality director? And how does it map over to the club level? Well, it maps to the vice president education, right? At the club level. 
And these are all skills that we gain. I will tell you, in every leadership level at the, the district level, team building, team recruitment, team building, team collaboration, we need to be sure that at every level in the district that we are building teams. Again, more leadership opportunities within those teams. And finally, what about the district director? Well, I will tell you, I like to look at the district directors as true captains of the ship. We've got Captain Marvel, Captain America, and I truly believe that our district directors are captains. And they are the CEOs, the captains, they are the ones responsible for the overall success of the districts, but they cannot do it without a collaborative team. And so again, at their level, they are managing this incredible team. And at every level, multiple teams, multi-tiered teams. They need to delegate, they need to empower. Yeah, sometimes conflicts happen. They just need to address them immediately and resolve them for the success of the district that they are leading. Well, guess what? We've talked about the club leadership roles, the district leadership roles, but Violetta is here and she represents the region leadership roles. All of us are supported by world headquarters and then the strategic arm of our organization is the board of directors. These are all the leadership levels within Toastmasters. I hope that I've given you a preview of these roles. We focused mainly on the area director role, the division director role, but we have talked about all the leadership roles within this organization. And I want you to know that you can serve in any of these roles. These are all volunteer roles. I think the best way to serve in leadership is to literally progress through the roles at the time that is appropriate for you. If you are more interested in communication than you are in leadership, then pursue that. Become a world champion, become an accredited speaker. But if you like leadership, and want to groom yourself for leadership in your professional life, Toastmasters is a great way to do that. Well, I see I'm at the bottom of the hour, Jean. So I hope that I've imparted some, some ideas for this esteemed group. And I thank you for being the most golden chat master um, tonight. So thank you so much. Absolutely, Lark. Thank you so much. Um, you, you, the chat's blowing up right now with lots of thanks for your wisdom and sharing that. Thank you so much for um, such an important message tonight. Um, if Lark has inspired you to think about the next step for you or the next step for one of your Toastmaster colleagues, um, she is very easily reached. If you go to tmd55.org, uh, dig into the the, um, the contact the the district team, and she's on the list of district chairs right at the top. There's a there's a place that you can click and send her an email if you're interested in hearing more about a, a position in district leadership, um, or really have. Um, a recommendation, a strong recommendation of somebody you've got your eye on. Uh, please do reach out to Lark. So I, Lark I put my I put my email address into the chat. Absolutely. So you are welcome to reach out to me. I would love to talk with you about leadership individually. If you're interested in any of these roles, don't hesitate to send me a, an email and we'll set up a time and talk. Thanks, right. Dean. So, so like if you want to hang out for just a couple of minutes, we'll we'll end this session. Unfortunately, we didn't have time for questions at the end, but anybody who wants to stay for a few minutes, if you've got a question, we'll hang out for a few minutes. And otherwise, um, I'll wish you all a great evening. Thanks for dedicating an hour this evening to learning more about leadership um, within, you know, it's communication and leadership, right? So if you want to get the full advantage out of the Toastmasters program, 
you gotta you gotta combine them both. So thank you so much for, for coming and hearing more about that. And Lark, thank you again so much. Thank you. Sharing. And if anybody wants to stay on for a couple of minutes, I'm certainly welcome. I mean, you can cut off the recording, but I'd be honored to answer any questions if anybody wants to stay and chat for a minute. Great. Thanks all. Thanks all of you. And I Have will pause evening. our recording now.